We're not seeing actually the kind of the anxiousness playing played out on the markets. Oh, Why are markets ignoring what happened at the G7? I think it's a pretty crowded week when it comes to event risk. Uh, we have lots of data releases. We have the Fed on Wednesday. We have the ECB on Thursday. So I would imagine the markets are somewhat overwhelmed uh, really mm -hmm. by all that. So presumably if indeed uh, we're going to see uh, any market reaction, that will be after we've seen uh, really most of the event risk playing out. And I guess the big risk now is that given the uh, uh, I would say the confrontation between Trump and the rest of the G7 uh, escalating. Uh, and if that comes, uh, is followed by further tightening in the global financial conditions, be it because of the hawkish Fed or indeed hawkish ECB on Thursday, all that may play out as rather negative uh, for risk correlated, indeed commodity currencies, overall currencies that are relying yeah. on demand from the G7 for their exports, yeah. for their growth. I mean, Sushka, if you look at kind of the, you know, the main fault lines this week, you have presidential standoffs, trade tensions, central bank meetings. What do you think will give the impetus to markets? I think the central banks, the Fed, um, what we've had from the Fed has been a resolute stance to getting towards neutral policy uh, throughout all the volatility, throughout EM volatility, European political risks and even trade wars. I think that that's the key focus for risk sentiment. Uh, obviously, the weekend's uh, events uh, add some uncertainty, Premier. But I'd say the, the, the tone from the Fed, the fact that they will still be hiking in the face of all of this volatility is, yeah. is a key focus.